So what you all came for, we'll get into the demo. And Patrick, you can see my screen, my browser. I can, yes. OK, great. So I'm in my uh, Jira software cloud instance here. And I created a Kanban uh, board in my demo Kanban project. And what you're looking at here is the backlog view. So Elassian created this, creates this con, con plan uh, feature where you can put your first status in a backlog view, particularly because you don't want your far left status of your Kanban board to include all of your backlog, which would get very busy and make it hard for you to prioritize and add things to potentially. So we have this backlog view where everything starts down here in the backlog, right? And it's very easy to create things. So maybe I want to create like story 5CA, story 5CB, okay? And then what we have with this is our epic panel. So we have our epic panel here so we can link easily link our stories to our epics. You'll see in Epic 5, I have 18 issues, six are completed, and I can grab two of them like this and just drag them right into that Epic. Okay, so now you can see it added Epic 5 there. I also have a version panel, so I can leverage my releases, which in Jira is that fixed version field, right? So you'll see I've released two and released three here. Um, release two has 48 issues, 23 are completed with start and end date. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and grab those issues and throw them into release two. So easy drag and drop stuff. Um, I'll collapse these. And then basically I can go into any one of these issues and you see I get the expanded issue details for you. What I want to show here are a few things. One is the type of work. So I added this custom field here and this allows us the ability to say if the work is unplanned or not, right? And you'll see I added um, a configuration here where the unplanned work on the far left is red. It really calls it out for us, right? I'm using the component field, um, but I could use a custom field for my cost of serve, my class of service. So I'm going to say this one's expedite, and um, go ahead and add that there. And you'll see that um, I added a configuration here to show the class of service on the backlog view as well. And then I'm going to go ahead and grab these and bring them to the next status of my workflow, which is selected for development. And let me just get to the top here. And I'm going to put it right here at the top, okay? And another thing I can do here is that, that uh, cost of delay that I was telling you about. So in the cost of delay, we created like a global loop transition along with some automation, um, all out of the box automation, no add-ons. And basically you click that button and it's going to give you those cost of delay fields. So what's that revenue per week that we would lose? Let's say it's $5,000. What's our cost of delay duration in weeks? We'll say eight. And then if I calculate it, you'll see it's going to add the revenue per week, the cost of delay duration, and it does the math for you and it gives you that 40,000. So you get to be able to visualize that right there. Okay. So now I'm in selected for development and I'm doing my work and you'll see the far right, far left is selected for development. Um, the reason why it's red is I've set some work in progress limits and I'll show you this in the board settings as well, but you'll see there's a minimum amount and there's a maximum amount. My minimum is five, my maximum is 15, I'm at 17. So I'm just gonna move these over to show you that it'll clear it and then it adjusted it here as well. Um, notice my workflow. Uh, my workflow has a bunch of different like hold statuses as well. Um, so I have my selected for development. That's kind of a hold status. I'm waiting on, I'm waiting to start my development, right? Um, it's, it's super important, I feel in Kanban, to be able to measure that as well, to be able to measure how long things are, are um, waiting for something else or things are stale and stagnant, stuff like that. And you'll notice uh, then I have my in development, then I get the ready for testing, right? Another hold status, then I get in testing. The waiting status I'm using here, which I added to my workflow um, to basically uh, put in there if any anytime I'm waiting for something like a vendor, I'm waiting for something like a teammate, um, uh, maybe a manager's approval, you could throw it in here and you wanna be able to calculate your wait time, okay? Um, and then ready for release, uh, throw it in there, another wait status. And, the, and when I'm ready to release stuff from my um, board, I just throw it into the done column and I have my little release button up here. I could select 2.0.0. I'm not gonna release it, but you'll see there's 50 issues in this release. 
23 are resolved, 27 are unresolved. It's going to tell me, ask me what I want to do with the rest that are unresolved. Um, and if I go uh, to here, this will take me right to my release hub. Oh, my issue navigator, excuse me. This will take me to my release hub. Cancel this. And then in my release hub, you can see my releases. I can click on 2.0.0. It's going to give you all the details of 2.0.0. There's 50 issues in the version. 23 are done. Two are in progress. 25 um, are to do. Gives you the list of all of them with all the details you want. And it also gives you release notes. So you get the release notes right there as well. So I can release from the board. And then I can use the release hub to visualize my release notes and all those, uh, all those important um, things that you need to see. Notice, too, here, if I move this one to waiting, this column turns yellow because my minimum is one. So if I don't reach my minimum, then it's gonna turn yellow. If I go over my maximum, it's gonna turn red, okay? Notice I have configured on this on my cards, uh, the red on the left-hand side for unplanned work. I have configured my cost of delay here as well. So I have some fields added on there. Just to show you how that looks um, in the board settings. So the columns um, section is the area I wanna focus on. So you'll notice that uh, we have our different columns with our different statuses mapped to those columns. Um, the last one here, we're setting a resolution to it. And we also have the Kanban backlog is using the backlog status, right? So I have these statuses mapped to these columns. Um, and this is where you also set your cost of delay as well, right there. Okay, I can also set swim lanes. So what I'm doing with swim lanes is my class of service. So it's basic JQL, um, showing the component equals expedite, and that's going to create my swim lanes. All right. I could also do quick filters, and I'll show you what those look like on the board. I created one here for expedite as well. If I go back to my board, you'll see that I have my quick filter up here for expedite. If I click it, it's going to show me only the stuff that's expedited and filter everything else out. You'll notice here too, I can collapse my swim lanes. And now I only have the expedite swim lane toggled open. So the board gives you a lot of ways to visualize a lot of different data, which is super important because anyone on the team can go here. Um, any, le any level of management can go here and they can visualize what's going on at any point in time. Okay. It also comes with some interesting reports. Um, so you get reports by board. Um, and uh, basically with your Kanban board, it comes with, a lot of this out of the box stuff here that I'm going to show you most of in a dashboard, but it also comes with a cumulative flow diagram and a control chart. So the cumulative flow diagram, oops. So the cumulative flow diagram is basically showing you the number of issues per status per day, right? And I can refine this report. So maybe I only want to see the stuff that was selected for development. It's not in waiting. I can apply that so it'll adjust it for me. And really what I'm looking for here are bottlenecks, right? It's not gonna tell me why necessarily, but it's gonna tell me what it was. So I'm, there might be one day where, where we have a lot of stuff, a lot more stuff in to do and a lot less stuff in progress and done. And maybe two of our team members were on vacation that day. So it, it shows you where things are um, and, and so that you can then go figure out why it is what it is. The control chart, um, it shows you a lot of different data. It's, it's quite busy, actually, in my opinion, and you can select the time frame here. You can select which columns you want to show the data from, as well as which swim lanes and which quick filters. Um, basically, based on the criteria you enter here, it's going to show you the average time that the, um, that the data lived in, you know, data was, was within those statuses. Um, the median, the minimum time, the maximum time, the number of issues. Uh, the solid uh, cluster of issues will basically is resembling is representing a cluster of issues. I can click on it and it'll show me the max average and minimum time as well as the issue navigator link to get to it. Um, the hollow ones are single issues. So it's going to show you all the information about that individual issue. You get the average in red, the rolling average in blue and the standard deviation. So pretty complex report. I'm going to show you another easy way to look at like wait time and things like that as well. So if I go to dashboards, created a really, really simple um, dashboard where you can visualize a lot of your data. I'm using uh, some out of the box gadgets. 
but I'm also using um, another add-on that we we uh, work with we work with quite a bit with our customers called Custom Charts for Jira. Some of you might be familiar with it. Um, it's by a vendor, Old Street Solutions. Really, really nice add-on. I'll walk you through it in a second. But I'm going to start with the left-hand side, and you'll see I have a basic filter results. I'm showing all of my stories. I have some metadata in here, like cost of delay, my class of service, if it's unplanned or planned work. Um, gives me just a, a way to visualize and click through um, all of my work items and what's going on with them. Um, we have another gadget here out of the box for resolution times. It's your average resolution time over a period of time per day. Your average age. So your average age chart of your issues per day over a period of time. So high level bar charts, you can click on them and get to the issue navigator. Um, and then we have on the top here, uh, the another out of the box one for your JIRA roadmap. So you'll see I have release 2.0.0 and it just shows me a very quick view um, of what's going on with your release. But custom charts for JIRA gives you a much more granular um, level of detail in terms of your reporting. So if you look at this first one here, it's a basic tile chart. But if I go into configure, um, it gives me a lot of stuff I can do with it. And basically I can select the pro my, my source, which is the project, the JQL or whatever it is. Um, I'm gonna select this whole project. Um, I'm charting by the type of work because I wanna see unplanned work. Um, I can calculate by the count of issues or I can calculate by sum or average. Um, I can pick whatever I wanna count by, story points, et cetera. And what's really super neat about it is um, I can do a chart title uh, and, and down here, I can actually select to hide and show things which is very nice. Um, I could select the color for each one of them, including hex. Um, I can change the name of any of these, these values, as well as I can combine values. So I can add options to individual values, which is super nice as well. Um, little fun fun thing they added, you could turn it into dark mode. I guess that's fun if you like that, you can order it. Um, and then you have a lot of display options as well. So great add-on to, which gives you really easy charts to use. Um, and anyone can use it. So uh, this is representing my number of issues that are unplanned in a tile chart. Very bold statement, right? It's, it's, it's out there for me and it's really clear that I have 16 issues unplanned, very easy to see. Um, two dimensional filter um, right here, basically showing the number of issues by release um, by class of service. Um, the number, a tile chart again, the number of issues per status. Um, pie chart, the number of issues per assignee. Maybe I want to go in here and I want to change this to a bar chart. I can do that as well. I can see it as a bar chart. Um, that's probably not going to give me much as a line chart, a single right there. So there's a lot of ways you can use this tool to visualize things differently. Stack bar chart for the number of issues by assignee by status. Um, bar chart for the number cl by class of service. I have a simple created versus resolve that custom charts does um, over a period of time, as well as a grouped bar chart by class of service and status. So that's a dashboard, but I'm gonna show you um, another add-on real quick, and it's called time and status. And uh, this is, I think, time and status for Jira Cloud. Um, and basically what it does is it gives you just a really neat, visual visual uh, view where you can you can uh, dissect your data and slice and dice it any way you want. So I'm gonna start here with a table view. You could basically filter your issues. You could show the number per row. You can update your source. <clears throat> and basically I'm looking at every issue over that period of time and the time it's been in each status. I can also do the assignee time, the average time, status count, et cetera. There's a lot of things you can do with this. Um, and what I like about it is are a few things. One, I get this view, but my favorite view is this pivot chart. Because with this pivot chart, I can actually see over this period of time for each individual issue, the time it's been in each status and overall total time and status. So over this time period, I had 844, um, 844 uh, I think hours that were basically, my issues were in wait, waiting status. So it gives you that data very easily. So between the the uh, the uh, the dashboard, which gives you all the unplanned work, this gives you your wait time right here as well. And you can see it in a chart if you prefer to see it that way. So you get a pie chart or bar chart stacked area. So it gives you a lot of options there 
Um, and you can update your metrics, days, hours, minutes. You can export the charts to any visual you want. Um, and you can export the um, the other data types, uh, the the uh, pivot chart, the pivot um, chart, yeah, to um, CSV. And you can also export all the custom charts for Jira charts to like PNG, JPEG, a few other things like that.